Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, uh, this is Vanessa Howie once again. Um, so yeah, I'm here with this nice little pink device here. I'll introduce it in just a moment. First, I want to show you my credentials. ISSA, Certified Trainer, and ACE, American Council on Exercise Trainer. Feel free to check those out if you'd like. <clears throat> this little device is from the firm. It's called the Zip Trainer. And I have had a lot of fun playing with it over the last year and a half or so. Uh, there's going to be a two or three videos, maybe more, that I'll be doing with this device in addition to some handheld dumbbells and uh, possibly some of the core balls which you may have seen in one of the previous Zip, tra zip Trainer videos. And this one I won't be using the core balls. I'll be using two sets of dumbbells, a set of three and a set of five, <coughs> while demonstrating, I think, I think seven different exercises, but I believe I can get that done in the time allotted. I will have about 30 minutes. There we go. Sorry, I was... I forgot to reset the timer on the light, so... Whoops! Okay. <laughs> the first one is going to be uh, what I call uneven squats using the dome. And I'll show the dome shape in just a minute. Second one is going to be called I Y, not like your eyeball, but the letter I. <coughs> I Y and T, the letter T, like time out, on the domes. Uh, pelvic tilts using the domes. Chest press and chest fly. And what I'll do is I'll demonstrate one and then flow into the other and show you the difference and uh, such on that one. Let's see, I'll also show you a modified push-up. In one of the previous videos, I showed you how to do beginner, intermediate, and advanced push-ups two different ways on this. Technically, it could be considered like six different ways, but each to his own. Uh, the way that I'm going to show it to you on this one is for those that want to build their strength, but they're not quite comfortable going all the way down to the floor like I did in the previous video. And so this is going to be one where the body is going to be laying on this device while your arms and legs are going to be uh, pushing from the floor. And I'll show you that once we get to it. It's going to be, there's going to be crunches that I'll be doing on the domes and side lunges onto the domes. Basically, it's going to be the domed uh, device, the device opened up and placed into the domed position and doing this all on the zip trainer. Either having the domes facing, uh, doing horizontally or vertically. So the domes, and I'm going to open this up here. This device is five pounds by itself. If you were to place core ball in there, it makes it way more, obviously. Or you can use the core ball by itself. This is what a lot of the videos refer to as the horizontal position, and this is what is referred to as the vertical position. So. Now some of my clients have stated, hey, you know, some of the videos, it's a little bit difficult to keep up with the choreography. You know, can you help me? <clears throat> and so instead of coming over to their house and showing them, you know, using gas money to do that, then um, I decided I'll do a video, I'll put it up on YouTube, and that way all of my clients can see it, as opposed to me going to house to house to house and showing them how to use their zip trainer. I mean, there's instructions included, but they can only do so much. Okay, uneven squats on the domes. <coughs> now, let me first be certain. Okay, good. That's very, very good. Okay. I'll show you a front and side view so that you can understand it better. Actually, let me put my weak knee on there first. So what you're going to be doing is I'm pushing into it to adjust. The leg that is going to be working is the one that's going to be on the floor. Okay? And so what you do, and it's the same with any squat that I've taught, but the difference is there's only one leg to deal with, and this one 
it's going to be pushing into the dome like this. But this one is going to be the one, the one that's on the floor is going to be the one that feels it the most. So you sit your butt back, you bend both knees and put your weight in the heels. If the weights are too much for you, don't use them. Okay. And there's some people that they have a difficult time putting their weight in between and they wind up doing this here, which is a one-legged squat. And you could do that. It would really condition that thigh. But this exercise is called an uneven squat, which means the feet are uneven on the surface that they're standing on. One is higher than the other. And so it would really be a good idea for you to put your body weight, your torso weight, between the two legs. Okay, now I'm going to go to the other side, and then I'll show you a side view. And you might be able to tell in this video, this foot that's on the floor is not in line with the front toe, the toe that's on the zip train, on the dome. It's not in line with it. Let me show you. You might be able to see it better. If I show you side view here. Okay. Now. It feels normal on this leg, but on this one, you can tell that the toes are not even at all. This one, the one on the dome, is definitely further forward. And that's because when you're stepping on it like this and you push into this heel, the heel, the foot is almost falling off of the dome. And that's the reason. Okay, <laughs> that was not even squats on the domes. I'm going to do I's, Y's, and T's. I'm going to have these nearby. And I'm going to do this while lying on the zip trainer, or yeah, on the zip trainer in the domed position. I'm going to do this, demonstrate it first, using my own body weight. Okay. And then I will add dumbbells. I'm going to scoot the zip trainer back a little bit so that you can actually see my arms doing what they do. <clears throat> okay. So. Yes, I'm purposely cramped in here because I want you to be able to see this. You lay your body on this thing. Okay. Now what you do, I'm going to put these close to the zip trainer. Thumbs are on top. Head down. You're going to lift your thumbs to the ceiling. Okay, that's the eye. Now. Take your arms out until they make a Y formation. Lift those to the ceiling. Okay. You do not you do not have to do this three times in a row. I'm showing you the repetitive motion of the exercise. Now take this out until your arms are uh, completely out to the side. I was trying to think of the word and it just lost. I just lost it. <laughs> it left. Now. Thumbs to the ceiling. Okay, now if you're going to be doing this within a set, then you do I, you come out to Y, you come out to T, and then you come back, and then you do it again. Now, <clears throat> I'll show it with dumbbells, but I'll show it from a side view with dumbbells, okay? Since that'll probably be a little bit easier for me to do. <coughs> now, there are some people that when they do a set of this, they will do five set of the I, or five reps of the I, five reps of the Y, and five reps of the T. That's okay. You do what works for you. It's quite alright. <coughs> okay. Lying down on it. Now, the reason I had you to do the thumbs up the last time 
is because on this one, your thumbs are going to be facing the ceiling anyway, but your head of your dumbbell is going to be facing it more. So, I, out to the side, Y, out to the side, completely, T. Now, if it's too much for you, I, into your Y, Y, and into your T, T, okay? That is your I, Y, and T. Next one. <coughs> Pelvic tilts. Now this one, I will still use the zip trainer for, but I will use it in a diagonal position like this to ensure that you're seeing it the way that I need you to see it. <coughs> to do is you're going to essentially lie down on this thing, but what you want to do there we go, oh, this feels really good. <laughs> what you're going to do is your butt is basically going to be on the floor to begin. Now with this it really really helps to have that butt on the floor, okay? Have your head on this dome, and your low back is in the uh, bottom dome, okay? Now, the way that you want to do this, when you're doing the pelvic tilts like this, your glute muscle, you're going to squeeze the glutes, which will press your pelvis up to the ceiling. And you press, you squeeze the glutes. Sometimes I tell my clients in order to feel it, you need to press into your heels to feel the glute working. That works as well. You don't have to just squeeze the glutes. So people, how do I squeeze it? I put my hand down there and squeeze and I'm like, no, 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 no. And I have, I have them to imagine, well, imagine someone's going to hit you there. What would you do when they flinch? That area. And so some people don't like that reference. So I say just push into your heels and that way your glutes will squeeze naturally to give that pelvic tilt or scoop. And so I am trying to show you how to do this pelvic tilt. Let me show you also from more, there we go. There we go. Okay. Alright, this is better. Okay, arms out to the side. You can push into your heels. I have my toes up, pushing into the heels. Yeah, that draws, contracts the glutes. Now I'm releasing. Pushing into the heels, squeezing the glutes, which tucks the pelvis or tilts it forward. Now, if you're not quite sure if you can do that, or if that's a little bit too much, then do a little pulse, a little pulse at the bottom. A little pulse at the bottom. Yeah, just try to tuck your pelvis under. Scoop it under. This may feel weird and silly at first. But it really helps to keep the natural alignment with that pelvis. With the pel pelvis and torso, it really helps. Okay, on to the fourth exercise. The chest press and fly. I'm going to use my five pound dumbbells for this. Okay, now <clears throat> for this one, I'm only going to show you a side view because it's going to be a lot easier to show a side view than it would be to show just a front view. Now, I will also show you a view like this where I'm back here and I'm showing it to you in this way here because sometimes it's a lot easier to see it not just from the side view with me laying down, but also a frontal view with you seeing the different angle that I'm going to be doing this at. So, when I do the press, <clears throat> when I do the press, I'm going to try to, I'm going to have the weight level with my chest. If you're doing this and the weight is up here level with your face, then it is too high and it is working the shoulder. Unless you want to work the shoulder, that is fine. 
If you want to work the chest, have it over the chest. And with the chest press, when you start, you're going to have the elbows bent at about a 90 degree angle, and you're going to push, push the weight into your hand away from you. And I'll show you how to do that. Pushing it away from you towards the ceiling, or whatever ceiling you have, <coughs> until it's at the top. Do not lock your elbows, just keep it extended. Okay, you want it to have slight softness in that joint. You don't want to bang the weights together because that can create more tension in the, in the joint itself. The, uh, the motion will reverberate through and it could really uh, uh, make the elbow not feel too good. Now that's the press. Okay, now with the fly, the palms are going to be facing each other and you're going to open up and you're going to close. Now the arm is going to stay long, but it's not going to lock. It's have a slight bend in it. Okay, now the fly is going to be more difficult because there's no bend in the elbow. Well, let me rephrase that. There's no 90 degree bend in the elbow. Because for some people, they, they do the fly and they're like, this is so easy, and they're bending their elbow. And I'm like, straighten that, and they're like, oh my gosh, this is so much harder. I'm like, yes, therein lies the difference. And for those that have a hard time doing push-ups, you can do these exercises instead until you get strong enough to do the push-ups on the downs, okay? All right, I have my weights here. They're not super heavy, but they're heavy enough. Okay, I'm gonna be doing the chest press, be bending to the side, I do not let them come down like this. Now, if you want to work more of the front shoulder, then you can allow it to come below the level of your body, but do not let it touch the floor, okay? There's a huge difference between being here, here, and way down here, okay? And bend the elbow. Now, when you're at around 90 degrees, and you can turn your head to look to see, push your hands to the ceiling. I'm not letting the weights touch, I'm not banging anything, and I'm not locking my elbow at the top. And I'm trying to keep it above my chest, I'm not letting it come up here, or letting it way, go way down there over my uh, abdominal area. I'm trying to keep it above my chest, in line with my chest. Yeah, I let it touch the floor that time, I was trying to adjust myself. There we go. Okay, now, I'm up here, I'm going to switch to flies. Okay, now, my arms are going to come out to the side. I'm not going to bend my elbows too much. A slight bend and that's it. I don't even have a solid grip. My fingers are very loose on this. I purposely do that so that I know that I'm not gripping it so hard that my knuckles turn white. And you still want to have this over your chest, so if you find that you're coming up and it's over your head like this, you need to bring it down here, readjust, and do what you need to do. Okay, I'm going to bend my elbows and bring the weights down and let them rest on the floor. Okay. All right. Now. All right. This is a... <laughs> This is one that I, that I like a lot. Modified push-ups. Now, those of you that, sorry about that, <laughs> for those of you that want to try the push-ups, but you find that the ones that I was teaching on the dome, domes in the last video, was a little too advanced, try this one instead, okay? It's a little friendlier. Oi! Yeah. It's a little friendlier on the body. And it will make you feel like you're doing, wow, a regular push up. When I first did it, I was like, wow, this is so cool. I was like, huh, I can do this one instead of, okay, got it, cool. My brain processes things just a little bit differently. And I'm only going to show you the side view because, quite frankly, I feel that that's the only view that you probably need to see. 
uh, I could show you the view where, you're, where um, uh, the domes are in the vertical position, but it almost would seem overkill. So you're going to lay down on the dome. Domes. Chest is on one part, pelvis and thighs on the other. Hands are going to be to the side of the dome, so you can have them slightly above, you can have them slightly below. I like to have them close to being in line with my shoulders, or slightly outside. Now this is for the beginners. You only lift your torso. This is it for beginners. Those that have problems with their knees, put extra cushion under the knees. Okay, now, I'm not going to go up onto my toes, but I am going to engage more of my body with this one. This is intermediate people, intermediates, intermediates. This is for advanced. I can do like three of these, that's it. And now I feel like, wow, I've got a real push up in, woohoo! That's the one I can do with the advanced on, but I cannot do it fast on the advanced. Okay, crunches on the domes. There are only two exercises to go. There's crunches and then side lunges. Crunches, I'll show you in this position here, but I'm going to be over here doing it. Okay, crawling around all over the place here. All right. <coughs> position as would you what you would be when doing the pelvic tilts okay the only difference is the upper body is going to be moving and not the lower body and what that means is when I do it you're going to notice that the lower body is going to want to help so you're going to see this motion going on here it's going to be a nat it's a natural move that the body does and if you're lying on the floor you're not going to notice it because you're on the floor and there's nothing that is, there's no slope, no downward motion. Like my tushy is hanging off this dome right now. That's the only reason that you would notice that your lower body may be doing this motion here that I am currently doing. That's the only reason that you might notice it. If I were on the floor, you wouldn't notice it at all. In fact, I don't even notice it when I'm doing that on the floor. And I'm a professional. So, what you do is you have your hands behind your head or in your neck, excuse me, in the back of your neck, you stack them, you don't lace them. And what you do, try to only lift your upper body like this. It's not a bad thing. If your body does this here, where the pelvis is lifting up, that's okay. But if you're starting to feel like this area down here is just, it's tired, it's like, wow, my abdominals are really tired, then just try to relax that lower part and only lift the upper a little bit. Okay? Squeeze through here. Squeeze this area here. Contract that area. One more. You can also do oblique twists on this. Do it to the side and do it to the side like that. Now you could add more intensity and lift up the leg, but some people might fall off. It's entirely up to you what you do, since this is, you're doing it in your own home. Okay, now the last one, let's go back to the side there, and be sure that I have plenty of room. Last exercise, okay. Now you're gonna be doing side lunges onto the domes. Standing to the side, and I'll show another view. Foot on, lunge into it, weight in this heel, push. So the foot that is on the dome, you push into that heel to get it up. Okay. I'll show on the other side, and then I'll show in the vertical position. Push and push. Okay. That's 
So what I want to do here is I will have this, there we go. So you can see it this way. There we go. I know I'm behind the dome, but if I do this in the other direction, you might not see it. And I really wanted you to see how this glued, and you stick the butt out there and get it working. So I'll see you on the other side just in case you need it. Here we go. Ready? this video please uh, click the like button please click the like but like button please subscribe if you haven't seen these videos before and you do enjoy it and uh, I hope do I do hope you enjoy I hope you have a great day thanks bye